Welcome back to the SiteShed Podcast. Before we jump into this episode, I want to share a concerning statistic and an observation that was made apparent to us over the last 18 months or so over at Trady Web Guys, which is the digital agency that we run that specializes in trade businesses. Eight out of 10 businesses that came to us, actually 85% of the businesses that came to us, with no exaggeration, they did not have the right foundations laid when they came to us looking for marketing related services. So what does that actually mean? Well, essentially there were people coming coming to us wanting to spend money. But at a greater look, they had so many holes in their bucket that spending money on the campaigns they wanted to get up and running was a complete waste. It was just going straight to water. The point is, guys, if you guys are looking at really growing your business, you've got to make sure you have solid foundations laid. We have, over the last 12 months, essentially revamped the whole way that we approach the digital space for trade businesses. And it all starts with laying the right foundations. So what does that look like for you? Well, does your website look right? Do you have the right conversion factors built onto the website? Are you capturing all of your leads and all of your contacts? Are those contacts being fed into a lead management system, which can help you first of all capture, but then automate and nurture your contacts? You do not want to be in that situation where you're constantly churning and burning leads. So guys, please, if you're doing any sort of outreach, any sort of marketing, make sure you have these things dialed in. Now, as I say, we've redesigned the whole way that we service our, our customers. And the first thing that we look at is foundations. So if that sounds like something that you want to at least get a different perspective on, head across to tradywebguys.com.au, fill in the contact form and have the conversation. It's not going to cost you anything, but it could save you and make you thousands. I look forward to chatting with you. Enjoy the podcast. There has never been a better time for you to start creating positive habits. Waiting around to make New Year resolutions is a mistake that affects all areas of your life. In today's podcast, Rob from Prava Group has generously offered you a framework that will help you create balance within your life through habit creation and habit tracking. It's the only true guaranteed way to improve your life, your business, your relationships, and everything in between. This podcast is literally for everyone. So enjoy. Hello, Rob. Welcome back to the Sideshow Podcast. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. It's been a bit of a regular lately, which has been awesome. Um, so we're coming back today for a conversation around balance. And I suppose it's pretty timely heading in towards the end of, well, at the time of recording this, it's the end of middle of December. So heading into the new year, um, people are, I think, are kind of receptive to strategy planning, getting some you know good habits in place. And I think today we're going to be able to riff on, well, first of all, we're going to discuss a principle or a program, I guess you could call it that, which you've um, develop within your business, and um, I've certainly got a bit of bit of experience with various things and books I've read over the past too. So I think we'll have a good conversation here. Yeah, absolutely. And depending when um when this goes out, depending when the listeners listen to it, if it goes out in the new year, it's probably going to be timely when everyone's trying to set their New Year's resolutions and everything. So it's um but regardless of the time of the year, um, uh, this this system that we're going to talk around today called the Bevan is um underpins uh great personal transformation and great success across all areas of life. So uh, yeah, can't wait. Looking forward to it. I think that's important too. Like, you know, that whole New Year's resolution thing is, <laughs> it's so jaded in a way because it essentially means you you just wait around in limbo for 12 months before you can get things into play that can really move the needle. And I've never really been a fan of it. I've never really seen seen it work effectively and i suppose the other problem is in relation to that which I've no doubt we're going to cover today is that whole you know the difference between a goal and a wish is the strategy and like people that are gonna you know oh, i'm gonna go to the gym every day you know in the new year and you're like sure by the end of january everyone's like straight in the pub and give, give, has given up on that so you know it's, it's good to sort of understand for people out there that like success is uh, and, and when I say success, I mean like like success could mean anything, right? You could be successful in sticking to a habit, or you can be successful in achieving, you know, family success or you know, financial success or whatever it might be. But the point is, 
um, having a bit of a plan in place and being able to execute according to your plan. And as we're going to touch on today, it's not it's it's not a case of trying to do too much. It's like how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? That sort of scenario, you know. So um, I'm really looking forward to this uh, strap, this design that you you guys have come up with. And actually, while while we're on that, um, why don't you give us a bit of a spiel as to um, what the Bevan means and what it is and how you came about that name. And maybe you want to tell that story that you told me offline the other day about <laughs> where the name came from. Yeah. I, um, where do we start? I think, I think the starting point is um, acknowledging the fact that because a lot of the listeners on this program are, are business people, especially in the trades and construction space. And um, at Prava, we only coach, uh, guys in the trades and construction space, and they're all business all, all um, business people. And I think the starting point is understanding that one of the like one of the biggest challenges that business owners face, and you ch- face it, I face it, regardless what industry you're in, is it's that um, balancing trying to build a build a successful business whilst trying to have a great family life, a bit of time in there for yourself, trying to look after your health and well being. It's like being in business is hard and it doesn't matter if you've got uh, five employees, 10 employees, 15, 20, 30, 50, the demands of business is always there. And so what I also often find is that a lot of business uh, business people, when I meet them for the first time, their life is in conflict. And what I mean by conflict is their health is competing with their business, their business is competing with their wealth, their wealth is competing with their relationship, their relationship is competing with their 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 health, and so um, what we call the four primary legacies of health, wealth, business, and connections. All four areas of life are just on competition with each other, and that's just because of the the demands of being in business is ever constant. And so, the whole Bevan system, and I'll explain why we call why we called it the Bevan in a second. But the the principles around the Bevan is. Um, about creating life integration across all areas of life and getting out of conflict into a space of being in control into some balance and order. And then ultimate is is balance and order and integration across all areas of life. And when you can integrate life, that's what I believe success is. And um, when you can get that, it's hard, um, but there's there's principles and a system that which ultimately enable that. but I'm, as I'm sure you'd agree as being a businessman is that it's it's ever constant, isn't it? It doesn't stop. Business is always pu- pushing and pulling you all over the place, isn't it? It's an evolution for sure. Um, however, I, I feel like what we're talking about here, and perhaps we'll get to this, perhaps we won't, but I'd like your take on it either way. Once you've kind of got that system in place and that system for con- for context, I mean, I'm probably jumping the gun here, but it might mean having certain time allocation periods, you know, blocked out within your week, so on and so forth. You know, when you are constantly being pulled in different areas of your business, and as I think we discussed, you know, in the previous series that we did in relation to you know, what, what your role looks like and how it evolves within your business, there's, there's always time allocated for you to apply yourself to whatever that given task or whatever that given area of your business looks like or more to the point needs to look like and it's not always your business by the way so <laughs> and i'm sure we're gonna get to that so yeah back to you yeah for sure and so we um we call this system the bevan and we actually named it after the infamous uh michael bevan the cricketer and uh i'm sure you'd remember i think you've got fond memories of uh michael bevan hitting that uh hitting the winning runs in that game from memory oh, i was there i was at that game at the scg when he um when he hit the the four to to win, they needed they needed four runs to win off one ball, and he did it. <laughs> so I think for some of our younger listeners, <laughs> I've told this story. <laughs> I've told and, this story and North Americans times, are going, "What's a cricket? Yeah. <laughs> Who's Michael Bevan?" Anyway, yeah, Michael yeah. Bevan, for those who don't know, is who don't follow cricket is um, he he was at the top of his game many many years ago, and he was renowned for being. Um, Mr. Consistent, Mr. Reliable, and they called him the finisher. And um, and when you look at Michael Bevan's game, he was world class and in the one day in the one day format. And he was he was compare it to someone like 
um, Glenn Maxwell, Dave Warner of the of the game at the moment, they're going out there trying to hit the the case off the ball every time. They're trying to hit sixes every ball. But when you look at Michael Bevan, what made Michael Bevan so successful was his ones and twos. He would always sit there and hit ones and twos, ones and twos, ones and twos. And he actually wasn't a flamboyant batsman whatsoever. He was actually um, very measured, very calculated, very consistent. And the success of his game was underpinned by um, hitting singles. And his mantra was, um, I run a ball. That's all I've got to hit. And I've just got to be there at the end. And I've got to be the finisher. And the more consistent I am and systematic I am about the game, the more successful or that, that I am. And so keeping that in mind, um, the way that Michael Bevan approached um, cricket is that we can learn a lot from that as, as people and especially as business people um, about being a high performer because the, the ones and twos that Michael Bevan hit is a reflection of um, daily and weekly habits. And what made Michael Bevan successful is just being so consistent. And so as people, as business people, the more consistent that we are on a daily, weekly basis based on the habits that we choose for ourselves is what underpins our success as people, just like what underpinned Michael Bevan's success as a cricketer. And so um, we called our system the Bevan um, because the Bevan represents a series of habits that you can do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, which is a single, a two and a four run um, in cricket. And, um, and it's a framework that people can adopt and build out over time, um, which underpins great transformation, great success, um, just like Michael Bevan did at the cricket. And I'm sure you'd remember him back in the day. He, was, he wasn't the most flamboyant batsman, but he was, uh, he was very, very good at what he did, didn't he? He was, a, he was an excellent character. So we actually had him um, at our awards. <laughs> we actually had him at our uh, awards, um, our awards night recently. We every July we do our awards night for our mastermind, and um, I surprised the whole group. And um, I'd had it lined up, but we couldn't have him for two years because of COVID. And we got, flew him up to Hamilton Island and surprised everyone. Didn't even tell the team. Um, didn't even tell any clients. And he was great. He. Um, um, and in my speech, here I am saying, Michael Bevan, not the most flamboyant batsman. And he's looking at me like, who the hell is this dude? Stitch up. <laughs> but all jokes aside, um, he was so successful at what he did because of his daily, because of his ones and twos. And I think we can learn a lot about that as business people is that there's a famous quote by Dr. Mike Murdoch that says, um, you don't decide your future. You, uh, you decide your habits and your habits decide your future. And I think mm-hmm. that's a really great saying and a really a great quote there. And that really underpins um, underpins the, the Bevan system is that you don't decide your future. Anyone can say what they want to achieve. They can set, engineer the vision. They can set the goals. They can, they, can, they can say anything and write anything down that they like. But fundamentally, you, you don't set your future by the goals that you do. You set your future by what you do consistently, mm. oh, daily, weekly, monthly. It's, it's your habits that create success more so than the vision and the goals that you set for yourself. Um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't become um, the, the best in his field by going to the gym once a month. He, he came, became so successful at the top of his game because it was rep after rep after rep after rep at the gym every single day. And so if you look at anyone outside of business in their chosen field, whether it's sports, um, music, arts, business, politics, whatever you want to do, the, the most successful people are the most consistent. Um, they're the most reliable. Um, they play a boring game and and they just do th- certain things over and over and over again, and that's what creates their results in life. Yeah, and I think that's a, a pretty uh, important distinction as well. It's it's sometimes quite boring, yeah, <laughs> but it's the boring things that that all add up. I mean, we've been through this process. You know, I mean, we go through this process all the time. Um, we know in the strategic planning of a business, and you, you know, you essentially reverse engineering, engineering your bigger picture goal into you know five, three, one year, monthly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and then daily habits, right? So 
a lot of listeners and viewers out there are kind of familiar with this. If you're not familiar with this, guys, it's it's essentially what the majority of coaches will take you through. Uh, it's about reverse engineering your bigger goal and helping you, you know, apply positive habits that can help you get to that point. The um, the reference that you made to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, I don't know if it was actually him that coined it, but I'm going to say it was because I know in his book, um, you know, he he referred to uh, the his approach when he was in the thick of training, which was, I just want to get 1% better across the board every single day. And I've seen that regurgitated in many books since from, you know, James Clear's book, Atomic Habits and all these other things. I think it, the principle though behind it is it's it's the small improvements which lead to the big achievement as opposed to what we may go after as humans which is the bigger thing which is like okay, how do we go straight for this big target which is not always sustainable and i think we're probably going to touch on some you know some other programs and things that you know i've done as well you know which are sort of going after the bigger thing and they're not really sustainable perhaps they're not meant to be perhaps they're meant to sort of shake you up a little bit but um i think the the outcome of this for all of you guys out there that are you know watching this or listening to this is you know, what can you apply to what you're currently doing today within your personal life, within your um, you know, financial management, within your business practice, within your um, perhaps spirituality practices or whatever you guys are into? What can you apply to these things, which, you know, those areas of your life, which can progressively lead to, you know, a 1% increase gradually over time, you know, because Correct. the effect then becomes compounding. Yeah. And it's actually 1% every day for a year, you'll be 37 times better by the end of that year. Mm. And that's what the compounding effect is. And so you're right, mate, is it's success comes down to discipline, commitment, consistency. Like it's those, it's those key words around just being committed daily. It's being consistent on a daily basis and it's having the discipline. And I think that, um, so many people do teach goal setting and and visions and reverse engineering and all those types of things but the key the thing that they miss is their habits yeah. like what are you got to do on a daily basis to actually make that trans transform that dream into a reality and the mm. the gap between where you are and where you want to be is actually what you do on a daily basis and in coaching we talk a bit about having your head in the clouds and your feet in the ground your head in the clouds is You've got to you've you've got to have that thirty thousand foot view in terms of where you want to go and be inspired around the goals and dreams that you want to have. But you've got to plant your feet on the ground and make your feet do the the walking, which is a reflection of your habits. And so far too many people live up in the clouds and they don't have their feet planted on the ground. Or if they do have their feet planted on the ground, they're actually walking the wrong path. And so. For all the listeners out there, the reason why habits are so important is that um, 60%, almost 60% of what you do on a daily basis is unconscious decisions based on habits. Um, I think it's 60%. And so what that tells us is most people think they're in control of what they're doing on a daily basis, but more than half of what we do and what we say and what we think is based on unconscious habits. And so we're actually not in control of what we do, our habits are. So if if we're not happy with the results that we're getting, it's often because we've got unhealthy habits. And so um, for the listeners out there, it's, if, it's about looking at your life and thinking, well, if you're not happy with a, a certain areas in your life around your health, your wealth, your business, all the connections, it's more often than not, not necessarily a skill gap it's actually a wrong habit that you've formed and you're executing on a daily basis. And so if they want to make change, they've got to go fundamentally down to behaviors, which is their habits. And if they can change them, then that's actually what's going to change their life. And that's why habits are so powerful. And that reference to like unconscious like actions and unconscious habits that you do, it's it's so true. Like for, for context, and anyone that's listening to this, if you think that doesn't apply to you, do you wake up in the morning and just reach over and grab your phone and log into Facebook and, and check your Facebook feed? Or do you go straight for your emails in the morning before you tick off the one important thing that you need to achieve that day? Like there's so many little things there which we just habitually do which don't 
help us move the needle in any way whatsoever. Right. And and so often we get we convince ourselves that they are important. Oh, I need to check these emails every morning first thing. When the reality is all all it does is it sends you into this state of check, checking off other people's important thing of lists of things to do, you know? Like you there's so many more things that you can do more productively by planning and strategizing and blocking that time out and allocating time to do important things, you know? Correct. And that's why, that's why, that's why this topic is so important is because if you want to change your life, you've got to fundamentally change the habits that you've developed over time. Mm -hmm. And that checking your phone in the morning is an example of a habit going home at nighttime and cracking a beer is a habit. Um, working ridiculous hours and convincing yourself you have no time is a habit. Um, sitting on the couch, scrolling um, through social media for an hour at night time rather than going for a walk is a habit. Um, most people use the excuses, I don't have time, but that's all crap. We've all got 24 hours on a day, seven days yeah. in a week and 365 days in a year. We've all got time. It's just that what's happening is we're spending the time that we've got as per our habits in the wrong areas. And we're yeah. wondering why we're not getting the results that we want in life. And so the results that the listeners are getting today is an absolute reflection of the habits that they've got. And so if they want to change the result, they have to fundamentally change the habit that they're performing on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, which is generating that result. And this is the hard part because habits take time to form um, and at the start of the habit formation process, it requires willpower, it requires discipline. And, and this is where so many people fail um, because they either try and make too much sweeping change all at once, um, or they just don't see it through to be able to ingrain that habit in their world. And I know as a comedian that's, um, that, that framed this around don't break the chain. And I really love this when it comes to habit formation is that what he used to do is um, say, a, a write, a, write a joke every single day and he'd cross it off on the calendar. And what he was trying to do is um, create links on his calendar and, and he didn't want to skip that. So I was like, don't. That's don't Jerry Seinfeld, wasn't it? Seinfeld, exactly. Yeah. And it was like, so that's what it takes in, in habit formation um, where You've got to not break the chain. And the hardest part of habit formation is at the start. And that's why we, there's a series of principles we're going to talk through shortly around how to create these habits. But this is why so many people fail because forming habits is bloody hard. And that's why you got to be careful around the process. And, yeah, and for you guys out there, my observations with, with this stuff is it's, it's not comfortable because it's something different. And where you're currently at probably is comfortable. So <laughs> sitting on the couch and scrolling through your Facebook feed at night or, you know, I mean, watching TV or whatever it might be, like that's just a comfortable habit that you've, you've slipped into. And you probably justify it by saying, well, I deserve this because of ABC or whatever it is. So the, the point is you, the, the only person that can change these habits is you and you can't be like externally motivated for these sort of things. You've just got to want to do it. I was definitely, and in truth, I should probably go through this again because there, there's the whole, like you do. And as you get older, I will say, you get more stubborn about things. Like I look at my parents, it drives me freaking crazy. Like just the stupid, stupid habits that they, that, you know, they've just got themselves sucked into. And I just think, what are you doing? You know, like you got to have these reality checks every now and then and you've got to have these shakeups, I feel. And like I did this program a couple of years ago, Rob, which I know you you talk about and, um, like it was called 75 hard, but it, it's not a sustainable program. Don't get me wrong. Like there's like essentially for 75 days, you, there's a series of things you have to do. You have to train two, twice a day for 45 minutes, completely, um, in, almost impossible for someone to do if they've got like a, uh, a business, which involves them being in a location or on site. And if you've got family, good luck, you know, I had one kid and it was hard enough, but the point is. You know, you, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do, a lot of them, and, and they're all habitual. It's, you know, you can't, you can't drink alcohol for 75 days. Some people are like, I'd be gone right there. You've got to drink like a, a two gallons of water or whatever that translates to. I think from memory, it was something like four and five liters of water a day. And you've got to, you've got to read a business, 20 pages of a business book, and you've got to do a few other things, which I can't even remember. But the point is, it sort of, it was a shake up and it, it was, 
it was not sustainable, but it was a really good uh, exercise to go through to make you realize that you can do the you can do these things and you can break routine. And off the back of it, the idea is that you set routine. So I think today perhaps we're talking more about you know what it looks like to set a sustainable, manageable routine uh, by you know again eat, doing do, do, doing the little things, the micro things, as opposed to <laughs> trying to do this ridiculous program which you can never stick to. Correct, and I I actually. I actually do like, I like 75 hard. I like the principles of 75 hard, but what I don't like about this, that framework is it's, it's not sustainable. And I've got some clients who have done it and it actually really created some great things in their world. Now, um, it, because it really shook them up. And yeah, so exactly. I know many years ago, I did the equivalent of uh, that with Max's challenge. And <laughs> if you remember that back in the day, it's just, it's, it's so hard and it's, it's, um, and I, I cracked it for three months, but the moment it stopped and I was not challenge focused, um, it, um, I've got my mm. dog barking in the background. Hopefully it's not too loud. Um, I, uh, the, the challenge is that it doesn't, uh, it, it was great for that three month period and it taught me grit and resilience and determination. And I think mm. they're good attributes that you need as a, as a business person, but it didn't have the right fundamental um, success habits for sustainability over the long term. It wasn't a lifestyle yeah. choice. Yeah. I know many years ago, I, I used to do endurance cycling and um, I've done some challenges in my time around three peaks where you're up over Falls Creek, up over Twonga Grap, Hotham, uh, up, up over Hotham and up the back of Falls. And you're doing um, 235Ks in under 13 hours and four and a half thousand meters of climbing. And I'm grateful for those experiences because of what it taught me is how how much belief I had in myself and how much grit and determination. And I know that those th those things that I've learned about myself has helped me perform at my highest level. So I think sometimes some of those endurance challenges, whether it's endurance cycling, 75 hard marathons, those things are good to teach people grittiness and determination 100 yeah, percent. and what your what your body's physically capable of you know instead of you, you get people in a gym that will do 10 minutes on the runner and they're like oh i just need to sit down i'll go grab a latte whereas when you you're forced into like competitive spaces and you're and you're you're programming yourself to push yourself to, to next limits it does it gives you like this whole new perspective on what you're actually able to achieve like marathon running especially you know I was on Ironmans and that kind of stuff and I was training for that like you just constantly being able to push yourself to the next level and it's like it surprises the heck out of you every time so I think those challenges are great for developing there's a lot of business people just they don't have resilience and in business yeah. you've got to be battle hard you've got to be resilient you've got to have yeah. grit and and you've got to know how to stretch your limits so those programs are great but when it comes to success in life and balancing all those areas of life, you've got to focus more on habits and the formation of habits over time. And the key word there is over time rather than making sweeping change. Yeah. Now, I've made the mistake and I always say to clients, I've been that guy, that alpha male where I'm like, oh, just let me change 30 things at once and I'll prove you wrong kind of thing. And it just doesn't work. It never does work because habit formation is really hard so there's there's four key principles that i always come back to when it comes to the bevan system and um and and principle number one is one habit at a time over time and what that means is you choose one thing not five not three not ten choose one thing that you're committed to changing and what i really like about that is is that you you then funnel all your energy and focus and willpower and, and um, discipline around changing that one thing. Because then principle number two is all about habit stacking. So you combine principle number one and principle number two together where it's one habit at a time over time. Once you've formed that habit where it becomes unconscious, stack the next one on top. Then once you've locked those two in place, stack the next one on that. When you lock that one in place, stack the next one on that. So even if it takes you a quarter or 90 days per habit, 
You just got to think over the next 12 months, if you fundamentally change four habits over the next 12 months, then your life will absolutely be transformed because you've you've stacked four habits on top of each other over a six month or a 12 month period. That's better than trying to make, trying to change four habits at once and not sustaining to it. And I think you and I've probably learned both those lessons where we probably tried to make way too much change all at once and it just wasn't sustainable, was it? Yeah, I, I like the, um, you know, when I, the first time I read Atomic Habits years ago, um, I'll put links to the books and stuff. Actually, I've got a bunch of ref, book references here and that I was going to bring up because there's a lot of great books around uh, creating habits and I encourage you guys to go and go and consume them because they are, they're really good reads. I mean, Atomic Habits is one of the best books I've ever read. Yeah. Um, you've got the compound effect by Darren Hardy. You've got the um, uh, the perfect perfect day formula from Craig Valentine. You've got the winning the week, which I'm reading right now with with Demir and Carrie Bentley. And anyway, there's a whole bunch of really good books around this sort of stuff. I think though, coming back to you know what you're saying, Bobby, with the like keeping it simple is important because sometimes you read these books and you go, you get fired up, right? And you're like, I'm super inspired. I'm going to go and change all these things like you just said and then all of a sudden you find out that you realize that you're not sticking to any of them because you've just you've just put too much on your plate the the, oh, the my exposure to habit stacking was interesting and for, for you guys out there for context um it doesn't have to be necessarily what whatever you're envisaging in your mind it doesn't have to be a huge thing and i i would also encourage you to not make it a huge thing because once you sort of get the understanding of how like how habit stacking and how habit creation works, then you can apply that to bigger areas and bigger things, knowing so, so how the framework kind of works. So, for example, when I wake up in the morning, before I go and make coffee, I always make sure that I drink half a liter of water. But that's a really simple example of a habit stack. Like I just won't have a coffee unless I drink half a liter of water before. So little things like that, and then you can take that principle and you can apply it to other areas of your life and so on and so forth. It might be, well, okay, if I'm going to go to, you know, the gym, I'm going to do four reps instead or four sets instead of three sets. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be a huge thing, but like Bobby was saying, it's the, it's the little things that make up to the bigger differences. Correct. And that, that brings us to principle number three is consistency trumps everything like consistency of that drinking that water every single morning. And the consistency of doing that daily over and over and over and over and over and over again, that's what creates the results. And um, where most people go wrong is they want to create a result, but they're inconsistent in that activity. Or um, and, and it's the little improvement every single day. And I think, if, I think 1% of a day is 14 minutes. And so if someone doesn't have 14 minutes to make change in their life, then they're... <laughs> They're kidding themselves. Like they're <laughs> bullshitting themselves that they don't have time. Everyone's got a 15 yeah. minute block to make a 1% improvement in their life. And so making the commitment to make the change is what's necessary. Because people say, oh, Rob, I don't have time to do exercise. That's crap. I don't have time to work on my business. That's bullshit. I don't have time to spend with my family as I'm working so much. That's crap. I don't have time to be able to make this change and do this. That's crap. All the, that excuse of, of no time is just has to be removed from the listener's vernacular. It's about choosing the things fundamentally that you're going to focus on on a daily basis and be consistent around that. Um, a great example of this is uh, a client pops to mind. His name's Sean. And I'll teach this a little bit later around, uh, around plus one, minus one. But an example around this is when you're trying to form habits, you always try and take a habit away and add a habit. So take away a bad habit, replace it with a good habit. And this is how easy it can be, but it's hard in, in, in saying that. Um, Sean made the commitment that Monday to Friday, he wasn't going to drink um, alcohol and he was going to replace that with water. So take away alcohol, replace it with water. He was going to take away going into the office early and replace it with spending time with his kids in the morning and help with um, getting ready in the morning. He was going to take away from constantly being consumed working in his business to spending at least half an hour a day working on his business. And they were three habits that he committed to doing. So 30 minutes of working on the business, no drinking Monday to Friday, replacing with water and spending time with his, um, 
with his with his kids in the morning. That took him th- um, ninety days to develop that. So minus one plus one, minus one plus one, and he stuck to that. And they became what we call his lead dominoes. So a lead domino is something you push over at the start of the day and push over before you try and do everything else. And that habit formation, um, just in ninety days, absolutely changed this dude's life because all of a sudden he was removing alcohol, consuming less um, alcohol. He was becoming healthier because he was focused on his hydration and nutrition. Um, he was spending more time with his wife and his kids, time working on his business and making change. So that little 1% improvement on a daily basis consistently over a three-month period, it completely changed that guy's life when for years leading up to this, he'd been battling, working crazy hours, not spending time with his family, feeling unhealthy, stressed, tired, worn out, all the symptoms that every trades and construction business owner faces, that was fixed within 90 days just by getting his daily habits right. And there's an example that when you get consistent around what you do daily and choose the right habits and remove some unhealthy habits, it can absolutely transform your life in a very short period of time. Yeah, that's awesome. Shout out to Sean. The other one is, the last principle is catch the drift and make the shift. And um, and we actually we actually got taught this by Hugh from the Resilience Project. And um, a big shout out to Hugh and his team and what they do there. And if if you haven't um, uh, been to one of his events or read read his book, it's um he's got a new book out. It's it's awesome. And this was one of his principles that we've adopted here at Prava that says catch the drift and make the shift. So the the problem is with some other strict programs is that they create this unhealthy relationship with failure. So if you fall off the wagon one day, they call you a fail, you fail, you, you failed. And I think one thing that the listeners have to remember is we're all human beings and sometimes we drift, we drift off course. But instead of drifting off course and labeling ourselves as a failure, the most important thing you can do is drift off course catch the drift, make the shift and come back into line. And the better that you can do that and the faster you can get back into um, into that process and back on track, that's what's going to help you keep moving forward rather than drifting off course, labeling yourself a failure and having to start again. So I think it's really important for the listeners that it's okay to fail. It's okay to um, if you made the commitment of not drinking alcohol Monday to Friday and on a Wednesday night, you go out and have one beer, like have the beer, enjoy it. But the next day, get back on track to to no drinking alcohol on a daily basis and recommit to that habit. But if but it's about making sure that you've got a healthy relationship with failure and catching those times where you do drift off course. Because I think um, yeah, some of those other programs sometimes create an unhealthy relationship with failure, don't they? <laughs> Sure, but in truth, I think you know those those other programs, like seventy five hard, for example, like that was that's designed to. It's I don't think it's it's clearly not sustainable. You can't do that, but it's designed to challenge you and it's designed to shake things up. Mm. So, I think, and I think that's a I think that's a good thing. I think it sort of prepares you for what we're talking about today, which is okay. You've you know you teach yourself that you can do something like that and then you that that equips you with the belief that you can go ahead and you can do seemingly off the back of that what is quite simple <laughs> what seems quite simple so i think what we'll do is um for the listeners i'll we'll um we'll load up a uh, hopefully we can get a an image loaded up of what the bevan uh, our bevan framework is but the bevan framework is a series of daily weekly monthly habits across the four areas of life, of health, wealth, business, and connections. And so what it is is a framework, it's a system. And there's a saying that says, you don't rise to your level of goals, you fall to your levels of systems. And what this is, is a system. And so what you've got to be able to do is create a baseline of systems or a framework that you always keep coming back to. So when you fall off, you come back to the system. Fall off, come back to the system. Um, I'll, I'll talk around it and hopefully there's a visual representation, but on a daily basis for your health, it's around um, training to sweat or eating to perform or a combination of both. And so what I haven't done is been prescriptive there saying you must do F45 or you have to go to the gym. Uh, for me, I um, every single day I go for a walk and I take 
Doug, our dog, our golden retriever for a walk every day. And for me, that helps me get my exercise. And every morning I eat a really good breakfast. I have supplements. I meditate. Um, I get stuck into the day and I walk and I walk pretty much most days. And so for me, um, I'm not a big gym person. I used to do a lot of cycling. There's a lot of people out there who love running, going to the gym, whatever your thing is. For me, it's going for a half an hour walk every single day. And I know that if I don't go for that walk, then I feel um, a bit meh. And if I don't have a great breakfast, I feel meh. So the first habit is train to sweat or eat to perform. Um, from a business, it's carving out time to work on your business or what we call rocks as per the rocks, pebbles and sand analogy. And so it's focusing on um, executing against your rock, finding half an hour a day to work on your business. And if you don't have half an hour a day to work on your business, then you're kidding yourself. You've absolutely got that time. Yeah. Um, in your connections, it's around spending quality time with your family. So it doesn't mean quantity, it's quality. And that quality might be getting in there and having 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of just quality time with your kids. And you're a dad, you know what it's like. You can spend two hours with your kids and not have quality or you can have spend 15 minutes with your kids and it can be quality. So it's not really the time that matters. It's the, the connection that's most important, isn't it? Then the last one is just do something to learn every day around your wealth and just whether it's listen to a podcast, read a book, listen to an audio book or do something to be able to move yourself forward. So on a daily basis, this is where you can gamify it where it's about achieving a four out of four on a daily basis. So train to sweat, eat and eat to perform, work on your business for at least half an hour, spend some quality time with your kids and, and read something. So in that time, you're probably looking at about an hour and a half in a or a two hour period in a 24 hour day. It's not that hard. You can absolutely find that time. And so the whole essence of that is the formation of those doing those four things on a daily basis. And I know that if if you do, if the listeners do those four things or build out to the point where they're doing those four things on a daily basis, then that will absolutely change their life and transform their world because they're forming those really good habits on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. Yeah, and the thing I like about it too is that it gives you the ability to work on things that are relevant to you specifically you know and that will obviously change and so you know today you might be working on your new hiring recruitment process or whatever it is and you know in a, in a week in a month's time you might be working on you know how to refine your accounts receivable department or whatever it is but the point is you've got that time allocation where you can apply yourself to whatever's important to you at that point in time right which is good and then of course the um i mean the consistency around just getting out there and moving. I mean, we've all been in that scenario where you you wake up in the morning, you get to the office and you you don't even stand up from the desk because you're just being constantly back to back to back to back to back. So, the, I mean, I, I wonder, Rob, in relation to that and for you, the listeners out there that are, are fighting this and saying, you know, having that whole perspective around, well, I don't have the time, they don't understand like everyone, we all have the time. We have the same hours in a day. So it becomes then a conversation around, well, how do you, how do you make that time for yourself? It's not, a, it's not a matter of you not having the time. It's just you're not making the time. So do you typically coach people to time block and to allocate a, time, a specific time of their day where they can't take meetings, they can't take phone calls and that sort of thing? Yeah, correct. And I think like it's not uncom uncommon when we meet a client for the first time, they're doing 60 to 80 hour weeks. And that's a lot, sometimes more. And they're stretched. They're working a lot of hours and they're, uh, they're, they're stretched. But the, re the reality is, is those people working 60 to 80 hours a week are notoriously spending 20 hours at least of that on the wrong shit in their business. Right. And so the the best way around that is to track where all those hours are going and work out well where is your time actually going and that time is a reflection of just bad habits so instead of um um uh, emails in, emails um doing admin work bookkeeping all um all those types of things going and picking up suppliers and dropping that onto site when you can get your um apprentice to do that there's eight hours a week back that you can then spend on the Bevan system. And so 
no time is just a bullshit excuse that they've convinced themselves to feel warm and fuzzy when the reality is they've got time. It's just going in the wrong areas. So this is where commitment comes in is you've got to make the commitment to change and change is hard. So you've then got to be able to reassess well, where is my time going? What is it that I've got to stop doing so that I can reallocate my time into some really empowering habits? And so the listeners who are working crazy hours and everything, it's about evaluating your life to be able to go, well, what's moving me in the wrong direction? How can I make one change? Like, how can I just start going for a, doing some exercise for 30 minutes a day? Or how can I consume less alcohol during the week? Or how can I just work on my business for half an hour a day? It's, it's making that one change because then if you can compound that change over time, that's where, that's where the results come. Um, no, no, I was just going to say that, 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 that exercise as well, it's, it's one that you can apply not only to yourself, but once you've kind of got the, the, the methodology and the, and the, the framework down, it's something that you can empower your team members and your staff to sort of adopt as well. Cause you don't really, you don't want team members that are burned out. Like for example, you know, I've got one of, one of my, one of my staff members, she had some health issues and I went to the doctor and the doctor said, well, you've got to change a few things here. You're sort of borderline diabetic, which is family hereditary related. Mm. And so she made a decision then to, you know, okay, well, I've got to apply more time. I've got to get away from the computer and apply more time to my lifestyle. And I was like, great, perfect. So, you know, it was, a, so I bought her a gym membership. <laughs> like all this stuff, there's things that you can do to, you know, empower your team to, um, you know, to make proactive, positive changes as well but it's kind of important that you understand how the process works for yourself before you can go and teach it to someone else yeah for sure so it's a i always say that um it, it it's about learning it living it leading it so right. you first got to learn it then you've got to live it within yourself and then you lead it to others um otherwise you become uh those Tony Robbins people who go to a Tony Robbins seminar on Saturday and on Monday they're uh, they're teaching it on Monday <laughs> right <clears throat> the other thing as well I think that's important is again we, we touched on it earlier but you've got to you've got to be you've got to be at the point in your life or career or whatever the heck it is where you want to make this change correct and it can't it can't come from like you can't it's not me telling you to go do something no one can tell you to do this sort of stuff because it's such an ongoing commitment you know you've got to be wanting to do it and like I, I hear this all the time one of my one of my best mates you know he'll come to me for advice in relation to i mean the most recent one was systems can i can you give me that system, your system on uh on on your on your recruitment process and i was like no and i'll tell you why because it doesn't mean anything to you you haven't lived it you haven't you haven't developed the system you're just being handed something and it won't work so i said he said go and read these books he goes, oh, no, I'm not reading the books. I go, why? He goes, oh, I haven't got time. And I don't like reading business books. And I'm like, okay. So until you're willing to accept and like actually want to go and learn these things, then there's no there's no shortcut to this stuff, essentially is what I'm saying, you know. And, that, and this is the problem I think a lot of people face is they, they, they do want the shortcut. They want the quick fix when the reality is it's, it's the, the win is in the journey. The win is in understanding and learning the process and very much on the topic of habits, you know, it's about understanding that process and, and doing the small things because you're building, you build belief within yourself by doing these things. And you can't, you can't go and teach that to someone. You, you just got to experience it. You've got to, you've got to enjoy the process and you've got to go through these things, but it has to start with you. Yeah, and, and that's what this system is all about. It's, it's, it's falling in love with that process. That is the Bevan. The Bevan is not something that you do. The Bevan is a way of life. Like Bevan, Michael Bevan, the cricketer, that was his game. And so the Bevan system has to be, you've got to be like Bevan. You've got to play like Bevan and play life like Bevan. And those four habits that I spoke around on a daily basis, it's not something you just do when you feel like it. You just do it because it's just your way of life. And so many business people, um, think, well, I've just got to go and turn up to, to business today. No, business is something you do. It's what it's who you are. And it's not about compartmenting, compartmentalizing your life to be able to go, well, I'm a business guy today and I'm a family man tomorrow. No, it's just it's just life. It's just who you are. And it's just 
it, it's your makeup. And that's why with our clients, we're trying to help them become four dimensional dudes rather than a one dimensional douchebag because most <laughs> clients that we meet them to start with, their life is a mess and they're a one dimensional douchebag where it's all about business at the expense of their family, even though they, they say that family is very important to them, but their life doesn't reflect that. So it's about taking them out of, of business, fixing their business from a structures point of view, which then gives them the time to work on their health and their wealth and their connections. Then that's when they become a dimensional person, a four dimensional guy. And that's when they become a better husband, a better father, a better businessman, a better leader, and their life becomes integrated rather than just being a one dimensional douchebag. And that's why so many people are in conflict um, out there in, in the business world. The, the majority, I would say. Yeah. Let's awesome. um, let's talk through the weekly and the monthly. Some of these weekly ones may not make sense to some of the listeners. And these are just purely because of some of the frameworks that we've got um, uh, within here at Prava Group that we teach over time. The simple one around your health is do something for yourself. Like give permission to be able to go and do something for yourself, whether that's um, just go and get a massage, go and um, just go down to the coffee shop and have a coffee and chill out for half an hour or mm. um, take your dog for a walk or spend some time with your mates, play golf, go for a fish. Like give yourself permission to actually go and um, enjoy life and, and not feel guilty about it. So that's one for around your health. Um, weekly around business is what we call Monday morning momentum. That's a, a nice little framework around um, setting up your week, celebrating your wins, closing out your last week and, and setting your new week up. Um, connections around date night. And so this isn't about having to go and spend a shitload of money on dinners and drinks and all those types of things. It's just doing something with your partner on a weekly basis, whether it's sitting on the couch and having a good conversation one night. It might be sitting out on the back deck and having a, a, a wine together or, a, or just turning the TV off and having a good conversation or going to dinner or it doesn't have to be massive. It's just spending quality time. Um, then around wealth is what we call the set and serve system. That's just uh, our, our profit distribution system, similar like the profit first kind of framework, but um, the set and serve. So I know that for the listeners, if they do something for themselves, they plan out their weeks better and execute better and they spend some time with their partner, and, um, and, and manage their finances better, it's going to change their world. So that's, that's weekly. And then monthly is have a bit of a tech detox. Um, look at your financials, your, your, your balance sheet, your cash flow and your cash flow, your, what we call the triple bottom line, and, and look at that on a monthly basis and initiate change. Just do something with your family one weekend and get away for a, a day or so and, um, and review your net worth and, and make changes. So what this framework is, is a series of habits on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and a monthly basis. And so there's um, three, six, nine, 12 habits that can be formed over the next 12 to 18 to 24 months. Like it might take you that long to be able to get there. But I know that from experience, from my own life and the way that we teach this to clients, like this is a this is a fundamental framework that we teach all our clients across all our different levels of coaching this is what transforms our clients' lives. It's because they're fundamentally fixing and aligning their daily habits, their feet on the ground to their bigger picture vision of where they yeah. want to go, which is the head in the clouds. And so it's about adopting this framework to be able to go, well, where do I start? And so the starting point for the listeners is not changing all 12 things at once. It's not even changing three things at once. It's changing one. So what I want the listeners to do as an action item out of today's podcast is choose one habit that is not empowering them and not moving them forward. And that might be around the amount of sleep they're getting, not spending quality time with their, their kids or their wife. Maybe they're not working on their business like they know they want to. Maybe they're not eating well or are training or um, they're drinking too much, other recreational activities which are not empowering. Choose one habit that's disempowering and make the commitment to take it away and replace it with something which is more empowering. So for example, take away drinking, replace it with water. Um, take away scrolling through Facebook in the morning, replace it through setting your goals for the day. Whatever that is for you, choose one habit that you're going to remove and replace and stick to that until it's stuck and then move on to the next thing. But I know that if the listeners do that and 
And it doesn't matter if they're listening to this in the new year or listening to this in May or, or October in the year. Just make the commitment to start and be prepared that it's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. But if they make that one change, then their life will start to change. And then that will motivate them to continue to make more change. And so that's where I'd recommend starting for the listeners today. Do you know one thing as well that I, I recommend to people when they're, when they're ready to embrace this is don't, don't go looking at your calendar. Like make a commitment. Don't worry about what's coming up in a week or a month or in two months. Just do it now yeah. and, and make that habit. And, and ideally, ideally, it does challenge you through something that is going to be if you had have looked at the calendar and gone, oh, but it's my birthday in two months, so maybe I'll do it after that because then I can have a few more. No, just do it today. Don't even look at your calendar and make a commitment if you and and go from there because it's so easy to make excuses around timelines and events in calendars, and that will never ever end. There's always going to be something or some reason why you can't or why you think you can't do something. So my advice on this stuff is just. Once you once you decide you want to do it, do it, do it, and don't look at your calendar. Yeah, I think the biggest biggest message that I send clients is most trades and construction business owners treat their business as something that they do and something that they turn up to. Mm. If more business people realize that if they want to be at the top one percenters, then they've got to be a one percenter. Like you don't see. Rafael Nadal smashing unhealthy food at nightclubs, jamming beers down his throat, and he uh, living an unhealthy lifestyle. He is the best because he, he acts and operates like the best. He's a one percenter. And if more business people treated business like a profession and started living like a one percenter, then their business would turn into a one percenter business. And so these habits as per the Bevan, is what turns you into a one percenter. And if if you make that mindset shift, that's what transforms your life and your business because you're you're sticking to the habits which fundamentally underpin your success in life, not just in business. Yeah, I think that's a huge it. takeaway that the listeners can can get from this episode for sure. Yeah, and you guys, you're all you're all capable of this. Again, it just comes back to whether like how how much you want it you know if you want change you're in control of that and that's the beauty of that's the beauty of being in business as well by the way like you, you know if, if you want a pay rise then you can do that you've just got to plan it like you're in control of these things so i really encourage you guys to pick this up um rob the of for you listeners and viewers out there we will have a uh, visual representation representation of this over in the show notes so head across to the sideshow.com um, dig up this podcast and we'll we'll call it the Bevan for you so you can find it um, and we'll we'll put that framework in there and you know what would love to hear your feedback on this like head across to the Facebook community and let us know you know your experiences about this kind of stuff if you've had any in the past or if you haven't that's fine you know the best the, the, the best time to start was yesterday the, the next best time is today so let us know you know the little habits that you you're going to work on to help move the needle and um, let's start a bit of bit of a dialogue in the group over there It'd be great to hear what you guys what you're valuing and what you think you need to be working on um bobby thanks so much for coming back and sharing that um framework it's brilliant i think it really does form such a important pinnacle and like foundation foundational layer for um just growth in period in, in general you know not necessarily business but not necessarily personal but across the board it just enhances and empowers people to to grow and become better. So appreciate that, mate. Shout out to the Michael Bevan. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to the Michael Bevan. I'm sure he's tuning into this one. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was cool, pretty uh, stoked because we've got the Bevan framework and the Bevan award that we hand out every year. So he was uh, he was he's chuffed, chuffed that he was yeah. handing out the, uh, the Bevan award from Michael Bevan. He loved it. So That's great. And I'm going to leave some, uh, leave some links as well, folks, to some of the books that I'd recommend over in the show notes also. So again, just go maybe, maybe download the audio book and plug it into your, plug it into your earbuds while you're walking the dog for half an hour each morning. Absolutely. That's a go good go. time to kill, <laughs> kill two birds with one stone. There you go. All right, mate. Well, thank you very much. Um, 
Rob, you're from Prava Group, P-R-A-V-A-R-Group.com, uh, amazing business coaching group for trade businesses. I really encourage you guys to go check out the stuff they're doing over there. Um, and I uh, made I look forward to chatting to you in an upcoming episode. It's been yeah. good having you on the show more regularly. I really enjoy it. Yeah, thanks for having me, mate. And uh, and and uh, let's see some listeners get out there and make some transformational change, eh? Awesome. Uh, that's a wrap. I just want to say a big thanks to Rob from Private Group for giving us another glimpse into his amazing program and once again sharing this incredible content and strategies with all of us over at the SciShed. To get notified of upcoming videos, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Please leave us some comments and your experiences with what we've discussed today down below. And as always, if you can share this video with someone else, that would be awesome.